Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, welcome back to the FPV Balloon Project. And what we what you see here is the payload. This is the payload. And I'm going to walk you through this, but it's not finished yet because I encountered a few little problems. Okay, first of all, obviously in the middle here we have a camera. This is one of those board cameras, the good old-fashioned CMOS board cameras, a PZ2040, uh, something or other, whatever. Just poked through this piece of foam board here. So it's got a good view. It's going to be looking down all the way. Then we have the video transmitter module, little 200 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter module. And what I've done here for the antenna, nothing fancy. We don't want fancy circular polarization. We don't need that. In fact, linear polarization will work better in this situation because we're going to get a better connection between the transmitter and receiver antenna because we can align them both vertically, which means we can use a linearly polarized patch antenna on the receiver for maximum gain. And we're not going to lose the, 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 sometimes you lose a bit of signal with circularly polarized antennas unless they're absolutely perfect. This way, it's going to be the most efficient way to get the signal from this module to our receiver, our DVR. And if we look on the other side, you can see I have an antenna. This is the guts of one of those little rubber ducky 5.8 gigahertz antennas, which everyone's got heaps of and I can't see one to save myself at the moment. So yeah, I just pulled it apart. It is what we call a sleeved dipole. So this little tube here is connected to the outside of the coaxial antenna. And this is just the inside of the cable poking up there. So it's a balanced antenna and it gives a reasonably good uh, radiation pattern. That means it's fairly omnidirectional, only a quarter of wavelength long. So it's pretty omnidirectional. So there we go. Um, then we have the power side of things. Now, this is where it didn't quite work as planned. Down here, I've got a two cell, 260 milliamp, oh, sorry, a one cell, 260 milliamp LiPo, which drives the video transmitter module because this will work on up to about four volts. So and running it at 4.2, probably a little bit over. It might get a bit hot, it might fail, but who knows. So, but it makes it really simple because all I've done is I've got this and I've got a little plug on there which connects into the battery connector, powers up the video transmitter module, tested that, it works fine. But the board camera needs 12 volts. And I thought, mm, what am I gonna do? I could build a voltage multiplier circuit that would take the four volts from the LiPo and triple it up to 12 volts, but <laughs> it's complex. It's extra time, it's extra components, it's extra money. And I thought, hmm, maybe I could use one of these 23A batteries. This is a pretty common battery, 23A. It's used in key fobs for cars and burglar alarms and things. It's 12 volts, but I wasn't too sure about the capacity or its ability to deliver current. So I measured the current draw of these things. Now, our little video transmitter draws nearly 400 milliamps at four volts. That's a lot of juice, but this battery can provide that. And the camera draws 70 milliamps at 12 volts. And I thought, well, maybe we'll be able to get at least 15 minutes out of this battery. Not to be, unfortunately. <laughs> These batteries are crap for current drains of that magnitude. They're designed for really light loads, like a key fob, which might draw three or four milliamps for just a, you know, just as long as the button on your key fob's pressed. Not designed for continuous loads. That ran for one minute and then it dropped to about six volts. So completely useless, which leaves me having to go back to my original plan of either using a uh, a voltage tripler or perhaps using a lower voltage camera. Now I've got other cameras here. This is a, what's this one? This is a one that runs on five volts. It's a surveil zone. Look at that, surveil zone. Woo uh, runs on five volts. And so I could possibly, possibly it'll run on four. I don't know. When the voltage gets down to three, it probably would crap out. So I'd still have to do something just to lift the voltage a bit. I could use a two cell LiPo and hook two of the cells up to this and one cell up to the video transmitter board. That would probably be the best way to go if I want to change the transmitter board out. So it's not a big change, it's pretty pretty simple. I've left the plug on here so I can just unplug that, plug it into there. I may just end up doing that because uh, it's gonna to be too much farting around otherwise. But there we go, that's the payload. Let's get the scales that don't show the blood and just measure how heavy this payload is. Radio, let's turn it on, turn it on, there we go. And I'm going to leave it as it is because if I put a voltage tripler in it, it'll probably weigh about the same as that battery. And if I go to a two cell battery, well then again, the extra cell will probably weigh about as much as that. So this is gonna be a pretty close indication of how much our balloon is gonna to have to lift. 38 grams. Now there will be some extra overheads. They have to have some string on the corner here. And I've decided to put some fins on here because the balloon will leave a turbulent wake as it goes up. As the balloon rises vertically, the air will roll around the balloon envelope and create some turbulence below it. So this little board would get jostled around by that turbulence. So I'm gonna put some fins on the 
on the edge of this board to try and make it more stable. It gives us also somewhere to tie our string. So that's going to be an interesting thing. So we might have to add another maybe 10 grams. Oh, look, it's just got heavier. Another 10 grams for the string and associated attachment bit. So, yeah, we're starting to get up there. And I did play around the other day with a 50 litre bag and it was marginal. So mm, I'm thinking, because a 50 litre bag is really only going to produce a little over 50 grams of thrust. We're getting into the really borderline area here. I've got to put tape on the balloon to hold it together and the balloon itself has you know, a reasonable weight. In fact, I'll get one of those balloons, show you how much it weighs, eh? Hang on a minute, while I walk out into the other area and find one of those 50, I weighed those the other day, I think. Did I? I'm not sure. Hang on, I don't know if I posted that video. I've lost the balloons, no! Hang on, here we go, here's one. It's 50 litre balloon, and I'm gonna fold it up, fold it up, here we go. Take this off here. Oh, scales have turned off. Never mind, let's go again. Here we go. This is a 50 litre plastic bag. Whoops, try and keep it all on the scale. Oh, keep it on the scales. 17 grams. So we've really reached the lifting capacity already. There's no headroom. So uh, rather than possibly put a lot of time and effort into making a 50 litre balloon that was only just neutrally buoyant and wouldn't go up, I decided to think big. Here we go, this is what I have. That's a 240 litre balloon, well not, I was going to say balloon, it's a compostable garbage bag, trash bag, bin liner, 400, uh, sorry, 240 litres. Now, if we use the rule of thumb that one litre of hydrogen produces about 1.2 kilograms of lift, then we're going to get around about 270, 280 grams of lift from a balloon that big. But once you take into account we've got to tie the bottom off, we're going to lose some of that capacity. We'll probably get around about 200 grams of lift, maybe a little bit less. So let's add up all the bits and pieces now. We've got that. Let's put this back on here. 85 grams plus another 10 grams for overhead. So we're looking at about, well, let's say we've got 100 grams of total weight, including the balloon itself. That means we'll need about 100 litres of hydrogen. That's quite a bit. It's only twice as much as 50 litres. Uh, but it is quite a bit, and it gives us the advantage that it won't completely fill this very large rubbish or trash sack. So there'll be room for the gas to expand as the balloon ascends. I'm sure we'll run out of radio range long before it gets high enough for that to be an issue. But it does mean the balloon will, in theory, go a lot higher than it would have done because the 50 litre bag, it would have started leaking or it would have burst due to the rise in pressure, the reduction in the outside atmospheric pressure. So this is a industrial strength FPV lift balloon. Now we can, we can lift, and it also means as far as choice of payload goes, I can have got a lot more latitude with the battery setup here. I could possibly go to even a three cell because a small three cell battery would then power the cam camera directly and one cell could power the video transmitter. So we'd have a lot more ease of construction and with all that extra lifting capability. It's going to be pretty exciting. Now I filled up one of these huge trash sacks the other day with nothing more than air and I left it outside in the sun and it got really, really buoyant. In fact, I did it with a 50 litre first and you can see in this footage here. The balloon was just about almost lighter than air. It was sort of bouncing around after a little bit in the sun. Didn't quite make it. So, but with the 240, it took off. It flew. Yay. Didn't fly very well, but it flew. So there you go. And remember, to all the environmentalists who have been complaining, you're littering the environment with your rubbish bags, your balloons, and you are, you know, a seal could choke on one of these. Well, these are compostable. That means when they land in a grassy field somewhere and the sun shines on them and the worms come out, they'll disappear. They will go back into the environment from whence they came. They are biodegradable. They are compostable. Fantastic. So environmental issues solved. And all we've got now is just a few more technical issues. So I'm going to play around more with the payload here, but I thought I'd keep you up to date. Now, if we are lucky and I can generate 100 litres of hydrogen tomorrow, we may get a flight in. And the winds are very good. They're supposed to be from the east, which would blow our balloon right across town and give us some really good aerial shots. But no guarantees, uh, because I still have to get this payload working. I still have to get enough hydrogen production at a low enough temperature. So, fingers are crossed. Wait and see. Comments, questions in the usual place, please. This project continues. Um, tell me what you think. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.